wonder, we just spent seven, eight minutes talking about the threat from terror. How could Republicans be put in a position now where they may be shutting down the part of government that deals with terror threats? Because some members of the House enjoy the politics of sterile gestures, as far as I, which is to say, send to the Senate a bill that you know, A, will not be passed by the Senate, and B, were it passed by some miracle, and miracles are thin on the ground these days, it would be vetoed by the President. All right, uh, that's George Will, oh, George Will's take on this whole thing. Joining us now is former Congressman Tom Tamcredo from Colorado, former uh, congressman and former presidential candidate, author of In Mortal Danger, The Battle for America's Border and Security, and, uh, of course, a, a very outspoken critic of uh, the illegal immigration that's going on. And, uh, Congressman, good to talk to you again. First, did you happen to catch any of uh, President Obama's uh, speech at his uh, little uh, summit on uh, terrorism? I try my best to avoid listening or seeing him at any <laughs> given time, and uh, so I must well, admit I, yeah, I've heard clips and references to it. Yeah, well, you know, it would have gone along very well with your um, your piece um, where you know Tom, you say that there's no reason to take Barack Obama uh, seriously uh, because he's a pathological liar. Right. Certainly, you look back at everything, it's just astounding to me, especially when I really thought about that piece at the point in time that he was talking about um, how badly he felt uh, as a result of telling the family of the lady that was uh, murdered in Iraq, beheaded, that you know, we just don't negotiate with terrorists and how hard it is for him to actually say that after, of course, we just got done exchanging terrorists for someone who could certainly be, eventually when he gets over here, uh, I mean when he is here and tried, he could be tried for treason or at least desertion, but we traded some, we traded five terrorists for him and we just right. did the same right. thing, you know, we, we traded people for a guy that we, they had in Cuba and then he, he just says things like that, nobody calls him on it, nobody said, you know, Mr. President, you're lying here. You are lying. And of course, because you have done this, everybody just goes, well, okay, I guess we don't, we don't negotiate. Well, of course we do. Yeah, and then of, co and then of course when we found that uh, Ms. Mueller was uh, confirmed dead uh, that same day reportedly, he made that cockamamie BuzzFeed video uh, where oh, he made yeah. faces and he talked into the mirror. That's how broken up he was about it. Yeah, it is really, it, it's almost, you get to the point where it's overwhelming. And that's why I've always said that in, an impeachment, a bill of impeachment is really so necessary and I recognize, just as George Will was saying, that it was, it's, you know, probably the ultimate in a beau geste or a quixotic action. But the reality is that if you don't do it, if you don't do a bill of impeachment, people forget all the things he's done. You have to listen because otherwise you're just overwhelmed by it. And it's only what he did yesterday or the day before that you remember. But, but we can go back a long way. To, to when he first took office and actually bribed a, a Pennsylvania congressman to stay out of a race in order for uh, a senator to uh, continue in his office. That's bribery, and it's one of the two things that's actually identified in the Constitution as grounds for impeachment. The rest, of course, treason and whatever the Congress determines to be, um, uh, uh, high crimes, and, high crimes misdemeanors. and misdemeanors. Well, I wonder if you would consider, and I wonder if the Congress would consider, they keep talking about him breaking the law, they keep talking about him trampling on the Constitution, yet uh, all they do is go to court. Now, it was not the uh, congressional court case against Obama that led right. to uh, what we're going to talk about now. It was the states. 26 states went to court and said, stop Obama from implementing that executive order on immigration. So first, talk about the judge's decision in Texas, and then how you think it, it should affect the Republicans going forward in their attempt to defund it in the Homeland Security Bill. Okay, first of all, it was a, it's a fascinating decision. When, I must admit, when I first heard about it, uh, you know, it was an injunction, and uh, I, I didn't know on what basis the, the judge had made the decision. I just I liked it. You know, I was glad that he'd done it. Done it. But when you read it... It's an so administrative, uh, administrative ruling, yeah. That's right. Um, he said, you know, you have not done any of the things that are required uh, by law to, to, to put into effect this kind of regulation. has to be all kinds of uh, public input. has to be out there for a long period of time. goes through a whole series of things that are, that are necessary and clearly necessary by the law. 
it doesn't even get into the issue of whether or not it's a good idea or the president had the constitutional right to do something like that. Right. So right. I, I think that it's and now I'm sure right this moment the Justice Department is out judge shopping like crazy, trying to figure out how to get this, you know, moved into a district into a different district. But um, well, I think they have to go to that district and that district is not friendly to Obama. So let's assume let's just let's assume that doesn't even happen by the time the funding bill comes up. We got less than a minute. So d d don't the Republicans take to the airwaves and stand out there and say, we won. This is unconstitutional. Now, if they don't defund it, too bad. You're not getting the money. Oh, certainly. I think so. <laughs> Will they do it? It's of course not. No, it's the matter no. of guts, no, and the guts aren't there, buddy. They just don't have the balls to do this I stuff. Know. What are you going to say? Congressman, always, always great to talk to you. Keep up the good work. We'll speak to you soon, sir. You bet. Take care. Tom Tam Credo, ladies and gentlemen, and read the book. Uh, it's a fascinating read. When we come back, uh, Larry Klayman, uh will be here. But